Hi guys and welcome to my Q&A for Next Top Singer 2020 All-Stars. Uh, so I'm Mark31 from Kent in England, a three-time judge and one-time mentor of uh, Next Top Singer and uh, YouTube Idol. And here is my second attempt at the Q&A. The first one I rambled on for 45 minutes and could probably trim it down just a little bit. So let's ha see how we get on. So how did you react to the result and further thoughts? Well, I did a reaction video that's available on my Twitch channel of that live, but had a few days to digest it all now. Um, the result, at the time, I was disappointed in that I voted in a different way, but the more I think about it, the more I think that even though I still stand by my opinion and I would have switched it up and voted a different way, it wasn't a bad result by any stretch. Uh, Scott's performances throughout this season, if he'd put that body of work out in his season where he finished fourth, I would have put him second. And it would have been a lot tougher for me to have argued not to put him first if that's what the other two judges were looking to do. So a huge improvement from him. What it came down to for me is that we had two contestants that were technically flawed, that both brought a lot of emotion to everything they did. I mean, Scott's performance in Sound of Silence, I had shivers running up my arm as I was writing down the technical issues that I was picking up in it. And you know, they both had those issues um, throughout the competition. Uh, but for me, out of the two, Ginga, their performance every single time, they are so unapologetically them, no matter what genre they're in. And you can tell that for Scott, he knows what he is as an artist as well no doubt about it but he pulled that back a little bit it felt like so that he was delivering better covers and fitting the brief more and kind of playing to what the judges see back that they'd given him in his season a little bit as well and that's fine that's playing the game that's going into it and running as a competition would have been and if I was in the judging panel, I probably would have mentioned round about foreign language round that I would have liked to see more of him and his entries and would have given him the opportunity to maybe bring that in and he maybe would have rocked out a little bit more in uh, one of the other rounds leading up to it. So you know, I think the big thing for me that helped me split between the two of them didn't really come up in the uh, discussion whatsoever and we'll, we'll come back to that in uh, a little bit. Um, the way that I thought about it was that if the two of them put out cover albums, then it would be a cover album from Scott or it would be a Ginga album performing someone else's songs. And it's a there's not much of a difference between the two, but there is a difference and that is what split the two of them for me. But like I say, you know, Scott showed huge improvements. I really like the things that he did. Um, I felt some things from his entries um two of them for sure i want to throw pokemon in there but considering i grew up around it and i spent most of the time listening to those entries belting it out then i can't really qualify that it was just a, a huge trip down memory lane uh, for me as well and i'm kind of getting the third question here as well do you, what do you think about the winner and the other finalists um i haven't touched on phoebe yet and i think i've said it before earlier on um, one trick ponies can get to finals of regular seasons and uh, yeah they do that just by really good execution and and nailing all the points even though it doesn't really fit it doesn't have that mainstream appeal and um, when you get into an all-star season I think one trick ponies probably shouldn't be able to get to finals um, ended up making it a bit of a, a two-horse race and you know, to echo the thoughts of uh, the guys when they were judging it, yep, Phoebe has definitely got a ready-made uh, career for her if she goes out to Japan. It uh, just kind of felt like she got lost going to sign up to next top uh, j pop singer and uh, walked into the wrong auditions. But, hey, there you go. Um, she is very good at what she does, and some of her performances are beyond beautiful, but they just don't have that kind of mainstream appeal that works across a number of genres now if you had an amy winehouse jazz inspired voice that fits a lot more to being a little more mainstream for a competition like this but you now i think it was just uh, the wrong competition for her more than anything else and still managed to get to the final so you know gotta say props to that how's your experience been being part of the show well 
I probably picked the wrong season, being an all-star season, to step in and mentor, as I'm sure the guys uh, know what it takes to get into the later stages of this competition. But I think there's a lot that I could have uh, offered. Um, spoke to Ginga a lot. Um, had a little bit of input for Scott and Aria, but not a huge amount, and Sam as well. But that's literally, what do you think of this song choice? Here's two, which one should I go for? Um, so quite limited on that front. And I think for Aria and Sam, I would have struggled to put in a huge amount of input for those guys because they're quite set in what they do. But I could have uh, contributed quite a lot, I think. Phoebe, I could have picked some songs that would have suited her voice but wouldn't have sounded J-poppy. Uh, for Kelsey, I probably could have offered some production advice so that her voice is a little more forward in the mix and sounds a little more prominent than sort of her sing-songy style, which is kind of her thing, but you know, there's more that she could have brought out from that. For Star, microphone placement so that you get more voice over ukulele. Um, a pretty obvious uh, example on that front. Trinity, I could have said, oh, here you go, tweak a few bits here, re-record that part. It's flat, it's massively flat. You've got to change that. There's a lot that I could have um, thrown in the mix and, and helped out with, and I understand that if you've had a formula that's worked quite well for you, you would stick with that, but then again, you know, it would have been nice to have got involved a little bit more. And then stepping into guest judge um, for that uh, one episode. And you know, it was nice to get back in the saddle a little bit as far as uh, that was concerned. And glad I got that opportunity. I mean, long story short, I was expecting to be getting married in two, three weeks away from now when I was recording this. Had a lot of planning to do with that. Had a lot of other things going on that... COVID has uh, stepped in the way of and made sure wasn't happening. So I've now got 12 months until uh, my wedding rolls around, had a lot more free time than I expected and could have maybe contributed to the season a little more instead. But hey, there you go. It was also interesting to be on the sidelines and see it from a, a different perspective. And uh, I didn't enjoy the perspective that I was seeing it from in a lot of ways. I just kind of missed being right in the heat of the action. But uh, Hey, there you go. It's uh, one of those things. It's nice to get some different experiences once in a while. Uh, next question. What did you think about the judges? Have they always been fair or is there anything that could have been done better? Always been fair, yes. The process works. It's impossible for one judge to completely take over and change things despite some of the feedback that I've got about my own <laughs> involvements in it. Um, but no, the process is completely fair and you know, like I've said in a few of my reaction videos, it's subjective as well. So just because one or two judges say something as being right or wrong doesn't necessarily mean that is right or wrong. It's their opinion. And there is no way that you can make a competition like this anything other than subjective. You know, Nick, as he said in the final, he had a point system. The point system is, again, subjective. You would point things differently to someone else, to someone else. And what is important out of those points, you know, that is... Again, something that is purely down to the individual. So, you know, completely uh, completely unavoidable on, on that front. It's the way it has to go, and it works. You know, you can try and argue it, but if it's a two out of three majority, it works. There's nothing else I can really say about that. I think some of my concerns that I raised in my Q&A after the uh, last season with uh, having three judges that were quite similar to each other causing problems, I think we've seen that crop up on uh, a couple of occasions. I've mentioned this more in my uh, reaction videos. You know, with both of those, I was sitting there at the end thinking, ah, right, okay, how has that happened then? And in the final, you know, two of the judges mentioned that it was very close. Uh, third judge pretty set in their ways. In that sort of situation, the third judge then needs to be on the offensive, playing devil's advocate, asking questions and probing. And I think that is super important because the process is we don't talk about anything in the run-up before we get into that deliberation call. Any attempts to try and feel a few things out in the chat normally get shut down quite quickly. And you know that is... That's fine. That's the way it goes. But, you know, often it's us sitting, listening to these entries 15, 20 times. If it was me, I'm guessing the other judges are similar levels as far as that goes. Writing our own notes down, writing, writing down our own thoughts. And by the time you listen to something that many times, you're pretty set in how you think and feel about it. And then 
you get into the uh, Discord call and that's when you start to maybe get those questions asked. And as was pretty consistent for me over my th three seasons as a judge, my voting tended to fall completely different to how the other guys did more often than not. There's disagreements across the board, but you know mine would quite consistently be off and different. And in doing that, it prompts the discussions already. Nothing has to happen. It's just there are different numbers in front of us compared to what the other two were thinking. And then straight away, that promotes discussion. You know, it it needs to happen as well, I think. Um, I mean, it depends. This is my personal thought on it, is that if you're going to be judging a competition like this and there's money on the line and the like, you really have to go through the process and kick it around and make sure. That can lead to longer deliberations and, you know, that's fine, but should a final be decided in 20 minutes when you've got two judges that are agreeing, but are agreeing by, say, half a point or a few points here and there. Should that be talked about a little more? For me, I would say yes. For other people, they may think, no, I don't want to watch that. That's not entertaining. And, you know, there you go. That's one of the things that you have to uh, kick about. Um, yeah, I think all in all, you know, generally most of the rounds that went through, I agreed with. Um, I only put out two reaction videos <laughs> Um, so that's a, a little bit of a sign of things. Um, I think the real shocker came in the uh, foreign language round, and I won't dwell on that too much. Uh, but you know, I think if that had gone a different way, we wouldn't have had a two-horse race in the final. We would have had someone come through super comfortable in musical theatre, potentially could have smashed that one out of the park with a good song choice in the grand finale, would have really beefed up their body of work and potentially could have bloodied the nose of Scott and Ginga, who I think were far and away the uh, the two front runners by the time the final came around uh, so that would be that's my feedback going forward on that front is that uh, it felt like it slipped through a little too easily sometimes and just because it looks easy doesn't necessarily mean you take that path right away you might ask a few questions go through and in the end get to the same decision but if you've done that, then everyone can say, yeah, we absolutely work the nuts off that. And that was right. That's my preference for how it should go. As I say, like everything, like judging, it's subjective. And maybe, you know, anyone else would think differently on that front. Uh, what do you think about the other contestants? Anyone specific you want to mention? I think it's just a shame with how the timing went and dropouts and that sort of thing that we didn't get to see uh, everyone to their full extent. Um, I mean, Sam's been mentioned already in one of the Q&As. I think he had the real potential to shake up this competition. Um, since the end of his season, I've listened to some of the material he's put out on Spotify, etc. And he is a polished artist. Like That guy knows how to put out a record and you know, potentially could have done some damage. And there's a few names in here that I didn't know from, you know, they weren't in my season, uh, that we didn't get to really see them show out. Um yeah, I think that's the uh, the main thing that I would uh, say about it is that we didn't get to see everyone's best in this thing. And it would have been nice if we did. And, you know, we could have had a, a huge, immense competition with super tough decisions on every single round, having to pick the worst of the best on some of these would have made it super interesting, would have made it an incredible All-Stars final. But... Uh, Hey, it didn't quite pan out on this occasion. And I think that the um, two of the three finalists for sure um, would definitely have been right up there at the end of things had that happened anyway. So you know, I'm not sure how much impact it would have had on the final. Um, just made it a little, uh, made the judging decisions a little more difficult, I guess. Favourite theme and why? This is tough, really, because I don't, tend to have a strong favourite or not. It's just one of those things that, that has to happen. I, I tend to feel quite indifferent about a lot of the uh, rounds going into it, but I think musicals had to be my uh, favourite this time around. You know, I was quite late to the party as far as musicals go. Um, round about school time or whatever, I did perform in musicals when I actually had a singing voice that worked on the regular. And, um, you know, I've I knew them from there, but it wasn't until my uh, 20s when I got to see my first West End show and how it 
already goes at the top level and was blown away by that. And you know, I was really sort of pleased to see some of those uh, songs in there. Some that I, I knew, of course, but uh, to revisit those and listen to the uh, different versions of the stage performances and that sort of thing was incredible and you know a lot of fun to be involved in that and listen to it least favorite theme episode and why i've probably said this before but the foreign language round does it for me and the main issue is that it's such a tough one to judge you know being an ignorant brit um i don't speak any other languages really other than english i did french and german at school so i've got a basic understanding that might allow me to order a beer or something while i'm there but that's about it um, I studied Japanese, which was my choice, so I, I put a bit more uh, emphasis into that. But again, my knowledge of Japanese is quite limiting. And that's the main thing that causes problems for me from the judging standpoint, is that I don't understand, I don't understand the language structure. I don't understand how the culture works in a lot of these cases. So Japanese, because I know about that, we'll, we'll talk about it for a, a little bit. So it hasn't got a Western alphabet. It's got symbols and then the symbols make sounds. Some sounds that would be in a Western alphabet just aren't in the Japanese language. So that's one thing that you have to get on board with for a start. And when you're, I mean, this is a, a big thing as well. If I was to say, what would I do without you? That, even though I'm not singing it, is quite strong and powerful in the message itself. So I, for a start, if you're saying I in Japanese, it's watashi wa. So you imagine that for I, how much more you have to put in across the course of a phrase or a sentence. And one way that the Japanese deal with that is if it is two people talking to each other, the I and the you, the subject, gets dropped completely. So you don't have that kind of powerful I and you in it. It's just kind of suggested. It's implied because everyone there knows what they're talking about. And that makes it quite unique. I think there was a mention of Petri about Russian, same thing, Russian has symbols, has a different language structure. I don't know about uh, the Russian, you know, how the language works as such or anything like that, but Russian culture, <laughs> from what I gather, is quite strict in the same lines as the Japanese culture can be quite strict in some areas. So how does that then come across in the music? Is it a little more restrained or refined perhaps because of that? It's just things that you wouldn't necessarily know about. And it's tough then to really know if the artist is conveying that in the way that it was meant in the original or if they've completely changed it up or whatever. You know, the kind of things that we could easily pick up, even just listening to a song a couple of times in English, you know, it just isn't available in the foreign language round. So I find that quite a tough one. And I mean, we've got some good performances that have come out of foreign language rounds, but also I think you know, that's something that a lot of contestants have struggled with in the past in being able to convey emotion in that situation, at least for the judges here to be able to pick up. Uh, do you have any criticism for the show? Um, I think just carrying on from what I said in regards to the judging side of things is for me, I would want to see a lot more devil's advocate being played, a lot more questions being asked. And even though it may stretch out the episodes a little bit, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to make sure that the right result definitely comes out of it. In a couple of the um, videos that I watched of it, it seemed like there were people that were in to be eliminated, for example, and then when someone else was eliminated instead, there was no real looping back to why the person that was in the frame to be eliminated in the first place suddenly wasn't. Maybe it was edited out, for example, but it's, uh, there was a few times where I'm sitting at the end of it like, okay, how's that happened then? And maybe that just needs a, a little more clarification going forward. Um, aside from that, the shorter format, I think, worked quite well. Um, the last season was a bit of a slog going on for four months on and off to try and slot in for the schedules and, and make it work. So I think the shorter format is definitely something that is uh, worthwhile. Even though there were a number of dropouts, I think that's one way that's going to minimize that and something to carry on for the future. Uh, number 10, do you have any tips for future contestants? Yes, think about your body of work as a whole. Because when it comes down to the final, that's what you're gonna be judged on. And if you're thinking about, yeah, I've got a potential to win this, 
is something you need to have in the back of your mind because it is pretty much all the way through in the individual rounds 90 percent plus about that entry in that particular round and then past entries or even thinking about what's going to make a great final makes up the five to ten percent that helps you split if you're not really sure what the right decision is going to be so of course you would think right okay let's just focus on that one particular round but then when you get to the final it's your whole catalogue that's being looked at smashing it out of the park in your last song in the final is going to help obviously but that is not going to be the be all and end all so if you've been pulled up on being the same old same old for four rounds kind of taking phoebe's example then just changing that up for the final isn't going to help you as such because you've got 80 percent of your body of work is j poppy in that one particular example so that's something to bear in mind make sure that if you're wanting to show things off whether it be versatility or power or range or you know you name it make sure that you are interspersing that across all of your entries in some way um, also i think uh, something that has been picked up by uh, a couple of judges in this season in particular i think it's been quite heavy on this front is uh, showing improvement i think showing improvement or heard uh, a few other had a redemption round was used a lot having a absolute travesty and one and then coming out with something that's better the next time around being a redemption round and, and making them safe uh, so you know, if you are showing that improvement as you go forward then that is going to be a good thing for you and then taking the feedback on board is again going to be positive and if you're showing that throughout then incredible that's great stuff and i know with the time scales and the amount of work that these guys clearly put into their entries then you know it's tough to be able to make that work but just look at the bigger picture a little bit while you're working on these individual entries and anything you want to add no i think that's pretty much it I'm quite excited to hear about the prospect of it coming back in the summer of uh, next year. I don't know what my involvement is going to be, if any. Um, hopefully there will be some kind of involvement. Being a regular season, I may be a little more busy as a mentor. Um, coming in as a guest judge and then doing the few reaction episodes that I did as well certainly makes me think that I miss the judging uh, side of things as well and really being in the thick of things. And I mean, I don't know if... I had been in the position with the same panel and had things carried on before. Would the final result have been different? I think the finalists would have been different for a start. Um, but, hey, who knows? It, in an alternate universe, this has probably played out in some other galaxy and you know, it would be very interesting to know what that would have been. Uh, but, yeah, it would be... Um, be great to see it come back again. I think the viewer numbers are starting to uh, rock up. 200 subscribers and counting is good. Um, hopefully we can get some good traction for it and uh, keep this thing going and maybe keep ramping up the uh, prize money as well because 200 bucks is always uh, is always useful. You can get yourself some uh, some good equipment upgrades or whatever with that. And you know it's a great thing. This whole thing has been great to see people, even if they don't win this thing or even if they get booted out quite early on in the competition to then see what they do after it and they take the feedback on board and you know a few past contestants i'm looking at stuff they put out on spotify or on soundcloud or following their youtube channels so i get them pop up in my feed once in a while and that's incredible and that's exactly what it should be and it's a wholly positive experience which is great and double thumbs up for that uh, thank you very much for sitting through this anyway. I'm sure it won't have been the most entertaining of videos for you, but uh, hey, there you go. I appreciate the uh, interest nonetheless. And we will catch you again next summer. It's going to be good.